Okay. So I'm, I start. Okay. Okay. So. No. Okay. Same title. Okay. Yes. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Uh, so yesterday, what we we looked at the case of uh, curves. And so these curves, they have a genus, a topological genus. So this is G, this is a one half of B1. And so we have seen or either G is equal to one or G is greater than or equal to two. And so this implies in this case, this is potentially dense. And here in this case, this corresponds to Mordelic. in both version analytic and uh, arithmetic, and so this is just modelic. And so the aim today, this will be a uh, first step is to try to generalize these, uh, these three classes to higher dimensions. And uh, because of the product and mixed uh, situation, this will not be sufficient, but then later on, we shall be, we, we shall try to understand out of these uh, the three classes that we shall define how to construct any manifold out of these. And so this will correspond, I will uh, give, uh, this will correspond to something which is kappa plus is minus infinity. Here we will have kappa is zero and this will be kappa is n. So I, we, we will give the definition a little bit uh, before, but just a first remark is that in general, this, this is a topological invariant, and in general, uh, we, we are interested in birational and etal uh, invariants, and so this invariant, it happens that one half of B2, B1, this is act, uh, may, maybe not for a good, uh, good reason, we, we shall see, uh, this is not a priori a uh, birational invariant. Uh, it's not an etal invariant, although this uh, doesn't, it, it may move uh, a lot actually uh, by etal uh, covers. So this is not uh, the right uh, point of view. The uh, point of view will not be topological, but it will be Alge algebra geometry. And so we will uh, translate this now in the fact, and this is Hodge theory, which tells us now that this is the same thing actually that H0 of X and KX. So this is the number of uh, sections in the canonical bundle. And so we see now we have moved from topology to really to some analytic or algebra geometric invariants. And this now we can consider in for higher dimension, this will uh, by far not be sufficient. Yes, in general, I would, would like to say that there are very few topological invariants which are birational, for example. This one, it happens to be uh, a topological uh, birational invariant, uh, but in order to see this, we need to, to express this in this way for example. And on the other hand, we have also another, um, uh, another example, but which is much less uh, obvious maybe. This is the torsion, the torsion of H3 of XZ, for example, if N, which is a dimension of X, is free. So this is another topological invariant, which was used actually for, so to solve uh, certain problems, but there are I don't know if there are really many others. I don't know any, any other, act, actually. So we, what we want to have is a rubber objects which are defined that way, algebra geometric invariants. And so if we start with this, we can do, uh, there are many more invariants, actually, which are completely canonical, intrinsic. This means uh, completely independent of any embedding in X in a projective uh, manifold. And for example, we can take the following, the first ones, these are generalizations of this. H is zero of kx power m for m greater than uh, zero, and this is called, in general, this is of the mth plurigenus of x, but we can construct many more uh, examples. For example, we can take uh, things like this, H zero of x, and here the tensor powers of 
omega one of x, and each time for each such a choice, for example, of, of m, m uh, return of m pos positive, for example, we get new uh, birational invariants. So you ha we we have lots of uh, series of uh, we can we can construct in, uh, other ones, for example, which are also of interest. Omega one, omega p of x here. Yeah. For any m uh, positive, for any p positive, for example, these are again all of these invariants. These are birational. This is easy to show this that these are birational. This is just an application of the Hartog's uh, theorem uh, that you you can uh, forget about the co-dimension two. Uh, subsets in order to, if you want to compute the, the number of sections of uh, such uh, uh, bundles, for example. But these are not, uh, these are not etal, uh, etal invariant in the, in the sense that if you take an etal cover in general, this will, of course, this will uh, change. As you may see, for example, by uh, taking uh, covers of curves even. They will uh, change, and now uh, actually we you you can do here even uh, better. Uh, actually, you you can construct really uh, algebraic uh, invariants. For example, we can cons consider the tensor algebra of X, which is uh, the sum direct sum. One of x, so we, you you can define this uh, graded algebra. For example, this is well defined for for uh, for any x, for example, and this is also a birational uh, invariant. And so the interest of this maybe this is that this is functorial. Uh, it is functorial in the following sense that if you have f, for example, which is uh, dominant. Uh, rational map from x to any y, for example, then this induces this induces an uh, f star, which will go from omega of y injectively to omega of x. So you have an algebra morphism, algebra morphism. And so this is uh, very nice, uh, certainly. The only point, this is a uh, functorial, but it, this is very essentially inaccessible. Very difficult to, uh, to compute in general. Except for curves in the case when you have omega one is kx, so then this can be computed. But uh, on the other hand, a much more a smaller thing. Here, this is the canonical algebra, which was uh, used uh, with R of x. Uh, by uh, Jan uh, yesterday, and so this is m from greater on to zero to h zero of uh, x and k x here, transferized with m. And so uh, now this is much easier in some sense to compute because here we, you take the powers, uh, the tensor powers of a line bundle. So this remains a line bundle, and so this is much more accessible. And uh, in fact, uh, but this is not functorial. Not functorial, unless uh, we have uh, dim of x is dim of y, for example, in, uh, in this uh, situation. So you, you can lift, uh, Powers of a canonical, just uh, uh, but only when you have the same dimension. If x and y, where is it? If they are the same of same dimension, then you can lift the, the powers. So we we have this actually. So so and, and now let me say the main principle of birational geometry. Uh, this is a little bit, I'm sorry to, to say this, this is my version. Maybe some people will not uh, agree, but uh, okay. I will. But nevertheless, I think this is uh, compatible with the experimental facts. It doesn't contradict any statement, I know. 
uh, main principle of uh, birational geometry is that essentially, so maybe the birational structure or geometry, qualitative geometry of any x it can be read read from the well is determined uh, from the data of this age zero and uh, excuse me omega one of x and so and we we, we shall uh, give uh, some uh, support for this and in fact this can be reduced in fact and even even from the data uh, for, for any m positive. If we know all of this, for example, uh, one thing which I would like uh, uh, to tell, uh, I have forgotten something, yeah. And even from just from H0 of x, kx tensorize with m for any m positive. If we know these plurigenera, genera, uh, unless, when pm of x is zero for any m positive. So this is just a principle and uh, um, expectation is essentially, so we, we have this, but in any, in all cases, in all cases, all cases, uh, in fact, the a zero of x and L tensorize with m, for m positive, for any p positive, and for any l uh, inside of omega p of x uh, should su suffice, should be sufficient. And we shall uh, give uh, examples of this uh, principle. So essentially, you have many uh, data which are completely uh, uh, given just by x, canonically given, and from this you should be able to determine and to say what is the, the uh, what is the birational structure of x. So we we, we shall see examples of this. For example, we we start with the e, always the easiest example, and this is a model curve. This this is the case of curves. So if we have g is zero, so we have uh, p1, and so this implies now that we have h zero of x uh, of p1, and here if we take kx tensorized with m, which is actually the same thing now as p1 uh, tensorized with m here, and so this is zero for any m positive. But so this is already sufficient for curve if you know that you have a curve, and if it has this invariance, then this is already P1. Or we have now, if we use Riemann-Roch, uh, if we have G is one, now this goes, this gives you that H0 of X, um, KX tensorized with M, so this is one for any M. Positive, so we have also this uh, constancy just because the canonical bundle is a trivial line bundle in this case, and so you have this. And now, if we have g is greater than or equal to 2, then we have h0 of x and then kx tensorized with m. So this is 2 times m minus 1, and here we have g minus 1. And this is true for, for any m greater than or equal to 2. For m is equal to 1, we have uh, one more section. But, uh, so we have this. And so you see that here we have a constant vanishing. Here we have a constant c, which is 1. And here we have a linear growth. With m as m goes to infinity. And now this leads to the notion of a so-called Ithaca dimension. Ithaca dimension of L, this is a line bundle. Maybe I will write it. This is a line bundle. 
any line on L on X. X, now this is Xn. We, we come back, we leave the case of curves and we take arbitrary dimension here. Huh? Pardon? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Ah, maybe. Can be read. Maybe. Let us say. If, if this is not quite, quite true like this, but uh, maybe up to deformation too. Up to deformation, maybe. Hmm? Yes? Yes, yes, yes. Up to deformation, maybe. By Russian. Uh, it has a dimension of L. So this is uh, a line bundle uh, on X which is equal to xn here. And so we can define now, when we have a Ferran definition, Ferran definition, there exists a unique d which belongs to minus infinity, 0, 1, and which goes up to n, such that um, we have h0 of x, and here l can start with m. So this is equivalent to something for C and uh, to C, uh, ah yes, there exists a unique D and C positive. Uh, C times M power D, for example. When the growth, uh, let, let me say for D, uh, for M large plus divisible by some, uh, divisible by some, uh, some fixed uh, number. If we have this, maybe it's better to write it in the log form in, because we have a special case, which is the same to say that log of this H0 here, which is, say, is equivalent maybe to, to D times D times log M, for example. And so I will not uh, go much into the details of this, but uh, let me, we have the same thing. So, so this means, this means the following. This means that H0 of X and L cancelize with M is zero. For any M positive, this is equivalent to say that kappa of X, ah, this, excuse me, D, this is called also kappa of XL, for example. So, sorry. So, this is the kappa dimension of L. And so, kappa of XL, this is minus infinity, essentially because here you will have zero, so this is minus infinity. This should be is essentially uh, D times uh, log M, and so D is zero, is minus infinity. So, this is why I took the log of form. Okay, so we have this. Now we have H zero of X L tensorized for, of, for M. This is equal to a set zero one here. This is equivalent to say that kappa of X L is zero. And now, so we have this. Okay. And divisible. So this means there is an M0, which uh, if you take M, which is a multiple of certain M0. So then uh, you will have this. But uh, it is possible that you get zero for the, non the things which are non-divisible. This, this is what happen for, for happens if you take a torsion line bundle, or you, you, you may have this, uh, this, this kind of thing, and divisible. So you have this uh, firm definition, so this is the idea, and otherwise, so this means otherwise we have H0 of X, L tensorize of, of M is, say, equivalent to a polynomial, equivalent to a polynomial uh, of degree D. And D is always less than or equal to N for any line bundle. And so you will get uh, N, for example, when uh, you, if you take an ample line bundle, for, for example, then you get, um, we, we say if kappa of X L, this is N, which is the dimension of X, if and only if L is big. And L is big, this means that this is something which is A plus E 
So this is Q ample. So this is uh, um, yeah. Hmm. Oh. Okay, I I prefer not to to say. Uh, so this means that a certain power, for, for example, will be an ample line bundle, and you add something which is effective. But I don't want to to spend much time on this if you don't know this uh, this property. So the essential fact is that if that this has really to behave in this in one of these uh, four ways, uh, three ways. And so now the most important, the fundamental case is when L is kx. So this is uh, called the canonical bundle for good reasons. So, and so in this case, kappa of x L uh, kx this is called just called kappa of x because it just depends on uh, on x, and so this is called for strange reasons actually the Kodaira dimension. Kodaira dimension of x. The reason is strange because this was introduced, in fact, by uh, Itaka and uh, Moisheson, and Kodaira never used it, in fact, in his uh, classification of surfaces. This was introduced in the classification of surfaces in the seminar by um, Shafarevich. Yes, uh, thank you, Shafarevich seminar. Uh, while uh, Kodaira made the, uh, went to a minimal model and then just uh, considered the numerical invariance. So this was a different approach. And so we have uh, this. Um, uh, fundamental case, and so now the properties, and I will uh, give some uh, properties. Yes, a case of curves. We have kappa is minus infinity. If we, if and only if we have g zero, we have kappa is one. If and only if g is one, and we have uh, zero, for example, uh, is one. If and only if we have g is greater than or equal to two. So this is just by uh, what is uh, written here. So you have this, uh, this property for curves. We, we have this. And so we get an exact description of these uh, three uh, classes. And so, oh, yes, some properties. Of uh, kappa. Kappa of x. The first one is that this is birational invariant plus, and now this is a pleasant thing, this is etal. So this means that if you take an etal cover of some, uh, of some x, it will have the same, uh, the same uh, Kodaira dimension. So we have, in fact, some I prime. So this is not very, very, very difficult to, to show. Uh, maybe the easiest way is to go to a Galois cover of, uh, of your x, and then you compute the number of invariant sections. And uh, Y prime, so we have here, if we have f, which is surjective for, for y, and we have dim of x is equal to dim of y, so we have a generically finite uh, uh, map here, then we have always kappa of x is greater than or equal to, to kappa of y, for example, but obviously we, we don't have equality. You just need to take, for example, a hyper-elliptic curve and it maps to P1, for example, and so you, you have a difference, which comes from the ramification. We have two, for example, and so this is an easy uh, property. Now, if we have kappa of x, and uh, oh, excuse me, if we take a product y cross z, this is kappa of y plus kappa of z. And so this comes from the, just for, from the fact that the canonical bundle is just the tensor powers of the lifts of the, on the two sides, which gives us that pm in fact, the more precise uh, version is that this is Pm of x plus Pm of z. And now if you take the log version of the thing, which is here, you see that this is uh, just additive. 
uh, and three in particular, and this is an important thing. So, uh, if we take uh, x, uh, yes, in particular, maybe I will put just y here instead of x. In particular, we have kappa of p1 cross z. So this is minus infinity uh, for any z. Okay, because you just have to add here, the, this will be, this will work also in this case. We will have kappa of p1. This is kappa of uh, p1 here, which is minus infinity plus something which is either minus infinity or finite, but this is minus infinity. If you want, this says that this plurigena will vanish here because you multiply, ah, this, not, this is a multi, uh, point, excuse me, this is a multiple. You multiply, so you have zero here, and this here gives you zero. So you, this, this is sufficient to, to have this vanishing. So this is an important thing, we, we shall notice this, this is important. Another thing, which plays a very important role is the, now if we have this property, uh, no, uh, for the canonical bundle, we have here the, this addition. If we take a product, now if we have, if x goes to some z, for example, which would be the projection here, in fact, uh, if, uh, there is a conjecture which is called CNM and which is due to Itaka, it conjecture. I will just uh, state it, which says that we have uh, kappa of x should be greater than or equal kappa of x z plus kappa of z. And here, this is uh, x z. This is the generic fiber. Generic fiber. So, but this is an open. Uh, this is an open uh, conjecture. This is a difficult uh, thing. This is known in many cases. And a very important case is when z, for example, this is of general type. So if kappa of z is equal to di di dimension of z, then this is known to be true. And this, uh, this is a result of a very important result by Fivek. Uh, Fivek, uh, we have this. And we, what we will use, this is a generalized form of this. This will be very, very central to what we shall do. So we have. Huh? Known for surface. This conjecture is known for surfaces. For surfaces, yes. Uh, for surfaces, uh, for free folds, uh, for example, in uh, many, many situations. Also yeah. yeah, okay. There are many, many cases, but I don't want. I just wanted to to mention the thing we we shall use. I will not make a list of all things because I would spend uh, maybe all the time on this. And so, And now, uh, just in order to, to see, ah, yes, we have, uh, no, I, I would not like, uh, uh, yes, maybe I will uh, give, uh, yes, okay, I will, what we have, which is very important, uh, which is connected with this conjecture, actually, so we have now the, um, Eta Kamoishes and vibration. So, so we assume that uh, this is following theorem, which is due to these uh, two authors independently. Uh, theorem, assume that kappa of x is greater than or equal to zero. Then, there, then for any for any m uh, positive and sufficiently large and divisible divisible, we have a map which is phi m k x here, which goes from x 
which if this is just a Russian map, and which goes to the projective space of H0 of X uh, and then uh, KX tensorized this M, and here we have the dual. And so this map, this is a very general situation. To X, it associates just the hyperplanes, generic, the hyperplane of sections vanishing at X of the sections, of course, the sections of these the sections of this uh, bundle. And so this gives you a rational map. And so now for M large and divisible, we have Z index D, for example. Le le let us say that this is the image by MKX of X, for example, and this is contained in this uh, project projective space here, and so the ZD, this has a dimension D, which is equal to kappa of X. The fibers are irreducible, are irreducible, and the general fiber, even the generic fibers, have kappa of X, uh, Z is zero. So we have this, uh, this uh, property, uh, and you have a... Can you? What, what is the question? Oh, it's a map, is only rational map, right? It's a rational map. Yes, this is the closure of, of the image. Yes, if you take the, gr the graph and you take the image of a graph. And so you have uh, these, uh, these properties. Moreover, ZD is birationally independent. of a choice of M, of M as in star. Uh, we have to take it sufficiently large and divisible, and so then we, we get a, a birationally well-defined object, which is, which is the image. And so what does it mean? Now, this, this means that now, if we use the tensor powers of Kx, for example, we are able, so we, we have three in, interesting cases. We have kappa of x first is n. Uh, recall that n is always the dimension of x here. So in this case, what does it say? It says that this, this map is birational onto the image. So this means that, um, so we, let me call it, we call it a general type. This is just the name, but which was introduced actually by Moishe Zon. Uh, kappa of x is n. Uh, in this case, uh, x is rec reconstructed by rationally out of uh, the space and the maps which are given kx uh, tensorized with m. So the canonical bundle, if you want, determines the structure of, uh, of x. You can reconstruct it. So this is the nice situation in some sense, but this is a very general situation. What's the kappa of z become minus infinity? I, I'm assuming. No, because the fiber have kappa is zero. Oh, fine. Kappa is zero. So this is very important. This is very, very important property. Uh, you don't have, this map doesn't exist. It's not def defined. Uh, well, so we have a kappa, or we have kappa of x is zero, and so what happens in this, this uh, in, in fact, this means that we have only one section 
each time for M uh, divisible. So if, uh, this means that the map here, this goes always to a point because what we have is just P over one dimensional. This is, uh, this is always a point. So no information. No information. And so this means that we need, in this case, to, to use other techniques. And so, for example, these techniques were very useful in the case where C1 is equal to zero, for example. So this is, this is a special case. And this is the, uh, implied also, for example, when Kx is torsion, and in particular when Kx is uh, Ox here, for, uh, for example. So in this situation, then there are theorems, but they are obtained by analytical methods, essentially by uh, Ricci flat uh, Keller matrix. So the situation is much more, uh, this more difficult. And we, we need to use other completely different tools, which are analytical, essentially, to obtain some uh, more uh, information. We have no information, but nevertheless, this is very strong. Uh, this is very restrictive. Uh, we, as we shall see, and the expectation is that actually kx is zero, so this should be equivalent by rationally, but admitting some similarities to the fact that uh, the canonical bundle is a torsion, becomes torsion on some suitable singular model, but this is not, uh, not known. And now we have, uh, so this is the situation. Uh, now we have the uh, next The next possibility, always when k kappa of x, I'm always assuming here that kappa of x is uh, greater than or equal to zero. The last property is when kappa of x, this is less than n, and when this is positive. In this case, then, this means that phi mk maps for us vx x, I can uh, change it uh, by rationally. Here we have kappa is zero fibers, and here we have a certain z Kappa, kappa, this is the dimension here. So what does it mean? In some sense, this means that we can reconstruct uh, x is, in some sense, is decomposed into parts with kappa is zero, which are the fibers, and kappa, aha, we don't know what it is, but at least something with z, uh, z kappa, uh, which is lower dimensional. Lower dimensional. And here this is kappa is zero fibers, which are also lower dimensional. So what does it mean? So uh, let me tell you a little bit in short uh, what, what is the meaning. But uh, you, you have to pay attention in general Uh, kappa of z, uh, of z may be less than the dimension of z, which is a kappa of x, and this is, this is just less than or equal to minus infinity. You may very well have a really a base which is of, uh, which is a P1, for example, or a projective space. This is not a decomposition into something which is kappa is zero and something general type. So we are not finished with this uh, kind of thing. So in some sense, so this means uh, when, when, uh, if we assume that in lower dimension we know what are the things with uh, kappa is zero, and we, if we know, uh, so maybe I should state this. So in any dimension, dimension n, the new manifolds, the new n fold, so this, this is a short for n manifolds. The new n folds are those with kappa is n, kappa is zero, and kappa is minus infinity. Otherwise, if you prefer, you can, you have a kind of understanding, which is not very precise, uh, of your x with something which is kappa is zero lower than dimensional or something which is lower dimensional but which is not in, the, in any of these classes a priori. So we have this kind of, uh, of uh, property. Let me show you in the case of surfaces what happens. 
in the case of surfaces, because in the case of surfaces, these new things are known. We know these, of course, for curves in some, some sense, admitting that we understand what are the curves of a general type, which is, a, this is a large class. Complicated with, uh, and each of them has uh, its own uh, personality, in fact. But, uh, uh, so we have this, uh, what did, the, uh, ah yes, the case of surfaces. Now, in this case, we have the um, uh, classification. of a request Shofarevich and Kudayar. I put uh, Kudayar at the end because usually this is Kudayar and request. Okay, but uh, Shofarevich is forgotten, so I put it a little bit, not in the alphabetical order. I try to to mention that he, he, they did also this classification uh, in this situation. So we have uh, uh, possibilities. Kappa is minus infinity. Uh, okay, let us take S. This is a smooth projective surface. So we have four possibilities now. Kappa of S is minus infinity. And this is equivalent to say that, in fact, S is birational. to P1 cross C, G, where C, this is a curve, C, G, is a curve of genus, of the genus G, and in fact, the genus G can be computed from the irregularity of uh, S, it is the same, where G is in fact, this is not only H0 of C and omega 1 C, but this is directly given, this is H0 of S and omega 1 S here. So this is, this is the same. This is the irregularity if you want. Usually this is called the Q. So you have a very simple thing, and actually, so you have essentially two possibilities in, in some sense. Either G is zero, and so S is birational to P1 cross P1, so this is birational to P2. Or you have, uh, it's not, uh, G is greater than or equal to one, and then the map which gives you the, uh, the map to C, C, G, this is given, this is the Albanese map. Uh, or we have kappa of S is zero, and so here, this is, uh, so we have a new thing here, this is equivalent. So here we, say, we see that we understand completely what are the new things. The new things are just a variation to curves. So we understand this, uh, very well the structure. Kappa of S is zero. This is equivalent to say that S tilde for some et al cover, S tilde of S here, we have uh, is either is a birational to either an abelian surface or to a Caffrey surface. A Caffrey surface. A Caffrey surface. This means uh, this is this is a deformation of a smooth. in P3. So if you take if the Caffrey surfaces are just the deformations of a, of a smooth quartic, a smooth hypersurface of the degree four inside of P3. You have only a single deformation class. One has to pay attention because here in all of these situations, abelian surface, this is also a deformation of a product of two elliptic curves, for example, but the general uh, member of the deformation is no longer projective. And you have exactly the same thing in the Caffrey surface ca case. Uh, actually, the, in the Caffrey surface case, the projective de deformation 
the general member is something which has absolutely no meromorphic function. But, uh, and so the uh, projective ones, they appear as countably many divisors actually in this uh, deformation space. But uh, so the situation is, uh, slightly is complicated, but uh, this is uh, in fact uh, similar to the one which appears here. Uh, now we have kappa of S is one, and now here we can see the use. We can use for the first time the Moishes and the Itaka vibration here, and so we have uh, this, uh, uh, maybe I should have given it a name, because I will just call it GX, it goes from X to something which I called uh, J of X. So this is this one, and this is a completely determined. This is independent of a choice of M. So we have uh, this. And now uh, we have JX, which goes from S to a certain B, for example. And now this, this is a vibration with uh, curves which have a dimension, uh, which have quadrilateral dimensions zero. So this is an elliptic vibration. So again, here, we can understand uh, any surface S with kappa of S is one. This is the unique elliptic vibration on S. Uh, just in some sense, we wish as a kind of twisted product uh, of a curve by elliptic curves. This is a kind of twisted product. But here you have moduli in general, so the, the structure will vary on the smooth fibers. But this, let, let, let us see this as a twisted product. A twisted product. If you want by B, but uh, there are some problems here, by B with uh, deformation class of uh, elliptic curves and so and we have kappa of s is two and so here this is a complicated uh, thing for uh, for example but nevertheless we see we know that the pleural genera they are determined if we take a, what is called a minimal model but i will not uh, go into this so we can consider consider the two invariants which are here and these two invariants for example they determine uh, up to a finite uh, number of deformation families the surface. So this, and they determine the pleurite genera, and conversely, actually, the pleurite genera determine this. So this, this means that the pleurite genera, in fact, def determine up to finite ambiguity the um, deformation class of your surface. So the situation is not that bad, but so the new things are here, here and here. And so this is not very new here in this situation, but uh, as soon as you go in dimension three or more, then you have really new things. I, we will uh, speak of this after. Um, excuse me? B, this is a curve. B, it's not obvious to, 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 to say this time uh, what is the genus of, uh, of B. Uh -huh. Pardon? J, by definition, I take any such map, Jx, this is phi mkx. This is, the, this is the same. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, what we choose, this is the elliptic vibration which is given by the Ithaca vibration. And actually, it is possible to see that uh, if you take another elliptic vibration, it will be the same. There is only one in this case on, the, on S. So there is no ambiguity at all possible. If you prefer, in general, there is an additional property which I don't, didn't mention, but if, if you have this, so you have a covering family here. No, let, so I'm trying just to explain what is happening here. So in, for XZ, for example, this is the maximal, the unique maximal covering family of X by uh, subvarieties with X kappa is zero. So you have only one anyway in this situation, maximal such family. 
But here, because of dimension, you have not the choice. So you have this. But if you have other questions, uh, does it answer your question? So, now we shall uh, define the three primitive classes. No, no, but uh, if something is not, uh, not clear, please. This question, was, this question was whether that map has to be, is it the same thing as the map to the average account? Uh, you, you, you mean the Albanese map? Albanese map. map. Uh, not always. Not, uh, not always. Um, I think probably yes. I'm, I'm not so sure. At least in the general, in the general situation, hmm, no, no. No, because if B is P1, for example, it will, it will certainly not be the Albanese map. It's, not a, it's a different map, not reducible to the uh, um, Albanese map. No. Three primitive classes. So now we shall define, for example, kappa is N. So this is the classes. This is the class of x n, dimension n, with kappa of x n is n. So, um, so we, they are called general type, manifolds. Um, kappa is n. Um, yes, next we have kappa is zero. This is the class of manifolds with kappa of x n zero. So they, they have no name. And so they generalize uh, curves with g is one, uh, g is greater than or equal to two. Here they generalize elliptic Curves. This is a big uh, generalization. Elliptic curves, and now we have a case. Uh, maybe if you expect kappa is minus infinity, this is not the right uh, definition. So I will define kappa plus is minus infinity. Now this is the class of manifolds. I will give the definition. X n with kappa plus of x is minus infinity, and I will general, this generalizes uh, g is zero here. And so we, we shall see this in a more uh, precise way, but the, the, definition, the definition is that kappa plus of x is minus infinity if we have, um, if we have kappa of y is minus infinity for any f from x to y dominant uh, y, we have here. And here uh, we, we, with the convention that kappa of a point is minus infinity. So, if you want the the definition is this, if we take x, and if we take here any y, which is a lower dimensional here, what we want is that kappa of y, any, for any such f, we have kappa of y is minus infinity. Hmm? Yes, yes, so in, in particular, so the remark, is this, the reason is this, the remark is that if kappa plus of x is minus infinity, and if we have a map f from x to y which is dominant 
and rational, then kappa plus of y is minus infinity. So this is obvious, completely obvious. Obvious, but by this is just I stress the, the difference. If kappa of x is minus infinity, then this does not imply that kappa of y is minus infinity. As we have seen, because we, we always have, uh, it is sufficient to take x is a p1 cross y, for example, and you can project it down to y, for example. We have seen that kappa is minus infinity here, and so this, so in other words, um, kappa plus minus infinity, this controls everything which is down, which is in the same class. While if you take uh, um, kappa is minus infinity, we don't see this. And now what I would like to, to, to make the remark is that now we have, we, we will investigate a little bit what is the meaning of kappa of x is minus infinity and what is the meaning of kappa of plus of x is minus infinity. And we shall see that at least a conjectory, there is a very nice description of both things. You are too quick. Yes, I, yeah. I'm supposed I imagine to speak for people who know less. <laughs> and so, yes, and so, um, what uh, did I want to, to say? Uh, yes, okay, I have forgotten. So now, precisely, we shall now uh, look at this thing, rational curves, kappa is minus infinity, and kappa plus is minus infinity. So in other words, we, sh we shall interpret, at least conjecturally in general, the conditions kappa is minus infinity and kappa plus is minus infinity in terms of uh, uh, rational curves. Um, so the definition, we say that x is unirolled if we have, uh, if x is covered, at least at its generic point, but this is the same thing, covered by rational curves. By rational curves. So the typical examples of curves is P1 and cross Z for any Z, which is covered by a rational curve, so obviously. So we have all these P1s here. And so, uh, equivalently, this is using the show scheme theory. Show scheme theory, we, this means that there exists a dominant rational map, there exists, uh, you know, there exists y, n minus one. So I assume that this is dimension n, so this is dimension n minus one, and uh, maybe I will call, call it z to y, n minus one, so this is a z, n, and so we have a certain vibration f here, with, uh, which is a P1 vibration. In P1 vibration. So this means that the generic uh, member, everything is projective, but the generic member, the generic fiber is P1. But it may degenerate to conics to anything, uh, to a sum of rational curves, always. So, and a surjective dominant uh, rational map here, and so there exists a map G, and there exists a G, so, so example, so which is surjective. So this is the same thing. You, you see that if you have 
such a map, then certainly Xn is covered by rational curves. Because here, the, this is a generically finite. So this is covered, but conversely, if it is covered, then you can make an algebraic family which is a covering, and so you have this. So this is the, the same thing. And now from this, why is this translation interesting? This is just because this gives us now the very easy uh, remark. This implies, and we have now the remark, that x uniruled implies a uh, kappa of x is minus infinity. And so the reason is that reason is that in this di diagram, kappa of z n is minus infinity. So this is, you, you can think of this of a kind of product. This is not exactly a product, but this is sufficient because here you have lots of p, p, p n. If you take the adjunction formula, the, if you take a pluricanonical uh, power, it has to give you also a pluricanonical uh, section in the fibers, but they have no pluricanonical section, so it has to vanish everywhere. This is a slight extension, and so you have this, the reason is that kappa and uh, kappa, and we have also kappa of z n is greater than our kappa of x. Because here this is a generically finite map, and we have seen then in this case, we have this inequality minus infinity. And so you have uniruled implies kappa of minus infinity. And now we have a central conjecture in birational geometry. I mean, there are uh, more general uh, versions, but I, the basic one is this one. So this is the uniruledness conjecture, which says that the converse is true. But kappa of x is minus infinity implies x being ruled. And so this is uh, now a terribly difficult uh, uh, conjecture because you, you see you are starting with essentially with empty n, so you have no section to start with, and so you have to produce all these rational curves. And so uh, there are some, uh, nevertheless, some uh, very important results. So now this is solved. For n is 1, for curves, this is essentially, this is Lurot. For n is 2, I think this can be attributed to Castel de Mauveau. And we have uh, for n is 3 now, and this is the last dimension in which, this is no, I, I'm just finishing, and this is uh, due, in fact, to um, Mori and Miyaoka. Pardon, excuse me. The conjecture is if kappa is minus infinity, then x is isomorphic to huh? x is isomorphic to uh, unirold, right? It is a unirold. Uh, the uh, unirold is a birational property uh, being unirold. This is birational property. It is. Uh, Unirold. So th this is a birational property, and this is above our birational properties. No, this is not your question. Yeah. yeah. So you have uh, this, and so the the property, but this uses uh, really this is very central characteristic P positive uh, techniques. There is no, no, presently no uh, characteristic zero proof for, for this uh, result in dimension three. And now we would like to understand a little bit uh, better uh, what is this uh, property here. This property is very abstract and we would like to interpret this. Now, um, I think, oh, I'm over time. Okay, 
So um, I will not have much time to say, but I will give a definition, maybe. The definition is that x, now this is rationally connected, if for any x, y generic, there exists a rational curl, h from p1 to x, uh, which contains contains uh, x and y here. So you have uh, this, uh, this definition, and so I think I will have to probably to, to stop because uh, I, I give, uh, or maybe I give some uh, example. Pn is rationally connected because you have lines which uh, connect any two points. And so this is a birational property. This is a birational property. So Pn, so this implies that x, if x is rational, uh, rational, this means uh, birational to Pn. Rational implies uni. Unirational, unirational, this means that this is, uh, uh, maybe I give a definition, it has that, that uh, there exists Pn dominant from I to x, and this is uh, generically fi finite, for example. So this means rational, this is birational to Pn. Unirational, this means dominated rationally by Pn, but the degree might be uh, larger than one. And so this is a larger class, which is absolutely not understood. And this implies now rationally connected. Uh, rationally connected. Another very important example now, but which is no longer birational. Everything here, this is birational. Now, if we take, this is implied by, uh, this is Fano. This was defined yesterday by uh, Johan, so Fano implies rationally connected. This is not, not obvious because here you have uh, only an information on the canonical bundle. And in fact, and you want to produce just from the negativity, maximal negativity of a canonical bundle, many rational curves. So you have this, and now, and this implies now that by one of x is one. So this is a little bit similar. So do you see this resembles very much uh, to the P1 case. And actually, what I will wanted to say, so we have this kind of thing. Uh, the things, of course, this is wrong as soon as you are in dimension uh, sufficiently large. So this is wrong. So a very big question is, does rationally connected imply unirational? And so the expectation is that in general this is not true. Uh, the, I will say maybe a little bit more, but uh, later. So the difference should be very large, in fact, between the two classes. So a general uh, rationally connected manifold should not be unirational. Uh, and so what did I want? Yes, and so I will explain this. No, but this is, or if you want, you can put this as an example. And so I finished with this for today. I'm sorry to be over time. Um, now the, ah, I don't have, no, I, I, I have to state something, uh, something more. Okay, I will stop here.